Welcome traders to another Tickner Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 9th of May with me, Patrick Mullally. Uh, this will be a big week for inflation watchers, given that inflation has been the dominant focus, driving a lot of action across global markets for much of the past 12 to 18 months. Still, markets perk up when the two biggest economies in the world update their inflation readings on the heels of decisions by major global central banks. Further, if Russia formally declares war against the Ukraine, as some expect, instead of labelling its invasion as a special operation on May 9th, in keeping with the 1945 anniversary of the Russian victory over Nazi Germany, then oil and inflation markets could get a further jolt with the risk of escalation, including greater mobilisation of Russian troops. Russia has denied this but can't be trusted as it has lied every step of the way. Putin will make a closely monitored speech marking the occasion. Before turning to the expectations in the context of the rest of the week's overall developments, it's worth stepping back and tracking progress on supply chain drivers that are playing a partial role in pushing inflation higher. The evidence across the suite of measures is mixed at best and continues to suggest that there is a lot of work to be done. The drivers of supply chain challenges have been shifting with new drivers taking over from prior ones. But it seems highly premature to conclude that Intense overall supply chain pressures are turning less inflationary. So let's take a look at the data for the week starting in the US on Monday. We get March wholesale inventories. Last time out 2.3% looking for a similar print this time. Final estimate restocking at a robust pace in the US. On Tuesday we get April and FIB small business optimism. Last time out 93.2 looking for a 92.9 print as Cost pressures are the key concern for small businesses at the moment. On Wednesday, we get the all-important April CPI. Last time we had a 1.2% print, looking for a 0.2% consensus print this time, as energy has a negative impact on the April readings. Then moving to Thursday, we get April PPI. Last time out, 1.4%. Looking for a 0.5% print as supply issues are supporting producer prices. We also get initial jobless claims. Last time out, 200k. Set to remain at very low levels. And we round out the week on Friday with the April import price index. Last time, 2.6%. Looking for 0.6% import prices hold at elevated levels. And we finished the week up with the University of Michigan sentiment. Last time out, 65.2. And if you're looking for a 63.7 print here, inflation and rate concerns are still front of mind. But also note that throughout next week, uh, starting on Tuesday and through to Friday, we get a bunch of central bank uh, FOMC speakers as well. So they, depending upon uh, their, their position on the FOMC, where they sit in the hawkish or dovish side, uh, they could also impact uh, the price action of the dollar. So moving to the technical setup, <clears throat> dollar index is heading to test that 104.47 area. From there, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns to play a corrective move back in to test the trend channel support. But again, as we hold support at 102.50s, I'm looking to play the long side, looking for a test up into the 105.38 to 106.64 target zone for the next leg higher. Moving to the Eurozone, uh, data starts on Monday, May Centex Investor Confidence, last time negative 18, looking for negative 20 as the Russian-Ukraine severely clouds the outlook. On Tuesday, we get May ZEW sur Survey of Expectations, last time negative 43, confidence on par with pandemic lows there. And then we round out the week in the Eurozone with March Industrial Production on Friday, Last time, uh, positive 0.7%, looking for a negative 0.05% as supply chain pressures are an ongoing headwind. From a technical perspective, euro dollar, any three-way corrective moves back in to test the 107.40, 107.50 as resistance, watch bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, and we're ultimately looking for a move down to 102.80s here. Equally, if we take out prior lows, 104.70s, I want to be short, looking for a test of that 102.80 zone. At this stage, can't get constructive on the euro unless we take out trend channel resistance now, coming in around 108.40s. Moving to the UK, um, slightly uh, lighter data calendar this week. Really focused will be on Thursday, where we get uh, first quarter GDP. Last time out, 1.3% print. Consensus is uh, a 
1% print this time. BOE warned of Q1 strength to be followed by a sharp slowing. Uh, we also get trade balance for the UK, and that's expected to be below average. Export volumes have really widened the deficit there. So from a technical perspective, sterling obviously sold off heavily after the BOE last week, and uh, Governor Bailey is pretty dire outlook on the situation in the UK. So really as we find resistance on any pullbacks into the 124.50s, I want to engage on the sh short side, looking for a test of this 120 target zone. From there I think we could potentially see a more meaningful corrective move. At this stage equally can't get constructive on sterling unless we take out this internal trend line resistance coming in around 127.50s. Moving to Japan. And then on Monday, we'd get the April Nikkei Japan PMI services. Last time at 50.5, final estimate for the month expected to be in line. And then on Thursday in Japan, we get March current account balance. I'm looking for a 1,765.6 print there, back to surplus from primary higher income and smaller trade gap. And that rounds out the data pretty light. Oh, actually, on Tuesday, we get March household spending in Japan, uh, looking for a negative 3.3% print, rising costs and weaker incomes to continue to squeeze spending in the Japanese economy. From a technical perspective, um, looking for the, uh, the yen here to, dollar yen to extend higher into initially the 133 target zone. From there, watch for bearish reversal patterns, looking for three way corrective move to retest. 127.60s, 127.10 area. From there, I'm looking to engage on the long side, looking for a move up to 135. At this stage, we really need to see a close back through 126.80s to suggest a more meaningful correction is in play. And rounding out the week down under in Australia, um, Tuesday, April NAV business survey, reopening momentum should continue to see significant price pressures. We also get first quarter retail sales, last time 8.2%, looking for a 1% print this time. Normal sales reported up to 2.9% quarter over quarter, but most of this was price led. And then on Wednesday, we get the May WBC MI consumer sentiment, last time out 95.8, but rate hike reactions are likely to dominate uh, that print. And then on Thursday, inflation expectations, last time 5.2%. And they're likely to remain elevated uh, to mirror the 5.1% lift in the first quarter CPI. And we round out the week with some RBA Fed speak. Uh, Bullock is on a, uh, a panel there. So from a technical perspective, the Aussie dollar, respect of the trend channel, I'm looking for a break now through uh, the 70 cents handle to see an extension to the downside, initially looking for a 68 50 test, and then as the trend channel remains in place, we have our equality objective at 66.25. At this stage, it would take a close back through the 72.70 area uh, to suggest more range trading at this point. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 9th of May. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.